Hey guys, uh, today project uh, is an Intel NUC uh, mini computer. Uh, the particular model number it's an NUC8BEH. Excuse my uh, my neighbors, which are doing some construction, and uh, you might hear uh, some uh, some noises. Uh, so anyways, uh, the problem with this uh, NUC is that it works for a little while after, he, after which it shuts down and it's not able to be powered on for about another 5 minutes or so. Uh, no matter what you do, the computer won't turn on. So if it's, uh, if it's left for 5-10 uh, minutes, it's been left alone. The computer turns on just fine, then it will work for a brief period of time, then it will shut down again. You're not going to get any error messages or anything like that, so I'm going to show you how to disassemble and how to fix the problem. The problem is basically the thermal paste and thermal pads which will have to be replaced. Now, in this particular one, the fan was already replaced before, so we know that it's not a problem with the fan. If you hear any sounds from inside of the nook, like a wiring noise or grinding noise or anything like that it's most likely due to the um, uh, to the fan which is misaligned so you will have to change the fan as well um, before you change the thermal pads uh, it's not the case with this one um, so let's uh, let's get into it uh, show you how to open it up the process should be pretty much the same um, for many of the nooks um, the particular model number of this one is NUC8BECAC. -E no, I'm sorry, it's NUC8BEH. So uh, let's get into it. Uh, let me show you how to open it up and how to change the thermal paste and thermal pads. Now, when you're changing um, the thermal paste and thermal pads, I will highly recommend you to use um, uh, to use a, a, a high-quality thermal paste. Uh, typically, if uh, if you're changing the fan, the fan will come with uh, some thermal grease. It is not the best one out there. I would uh, recommend uh, against using the one which comes with the fan. Uh, I'm gonna show you right now which one we're talking about. After I'm going to fix this camera holder, just bear with me for a second. It should be fine. So yeah, uh, when you buy a thermal, uh, when you buy a new fan, typically this is the thermal paste it comes with. Uh, this is an inferior product. I would not use this one for anything. Uh, I mean, it's nice of them that they uh, give you that, but I would recommend you to use um, Arctic Silver, uh, Arctic Silver thermal paste and uh, thermal pads as well. Okay, you can uh, you can find them uh, you can find them anywhere. Uh, I mean anywhere. You can find them online. Uh, this is the thermal. Uh, that's how it looks. Uh, the thermal uh, pad. This is uh, cut to order. Okay, this one it is a little bit. Uh, this is the only one that I have with uh, um, with the original um, packaging. Uh, this is not the right one though. Uh, so I'm just showing you how it should look uh, You will need a much thinner one. So in order to disassemble this one uh, You will have to remove the four screws on the bottom plate Okay, and those are really tight. So I'm going to use a hand drill okay, One Okay, so these screws are disengaged. We're gonna lift the back plate, okay, slowly because you will see that underneath, in this particular one, you have the SSD drive which is mounted on the back plate, and you have the connecting cables underneath. So, we're gonna disconnect the cables from the board, from the main board of the NUC. We're gonna pull out the SATA cable. Okay, that will give us a little bit more space and we're going to disconnect the power cable. Okay, so we have the SSD right here. By the way, if your NUC came with a regular uh, hard drive, uh, this is where the SSD will typically go. Now, in this particular one, you can also upgrade it uh, with, a, um, 
with another SSD which takes an NVMe type of drive which is uh, one of these guys which will be mounted just like this okay um, so this one will give you speeds of about seven times uh, the speed of a regular SATA SSD okay that's just for you to know you have the RAM right here which is easily upgradable we're not going to do that now uh, since there's not the reason the computer came in the shop for so we we'll see we have a couple more cables here we're going to disconnect uh, these ones this basically is for uh, the light the indicator light and for the reset button on the front of the computer and we're going to disconnect these two little uh, wi-fi antennas okay and now uh, there are two screws which is holding the motherboard in place we're gonna remove that because we have to get the fan and the thermal compound it's all the way on the other side okay now as you see we disconnected those two screws but this the motherboard does not have any kind of play okay so what we have to do okay we'll have to pretty much take a take a small pry tool okay because all these uh all these ports are somewhat going into the case so it's a little bit hard to so you just push it a little bit towards you just like this okay and now we can lift we can leave the main board okay let me grab uh, something a plastic plastic tool so i help i help the board in coming up so Just like that okay and so we're gonna leave this part right there and now we have more uh, more USBs on the other side we're gonna do exactly the same thing just on the other side of the board okay make sure by the way make sure you don't have any uh, SD card in the SD card mini SD card port because that will prevent the board from coming up and we are going to bring it up it's a very tight fit in here okay so you just pull it up uh, you can use this uh, empty screw for the SSD and this will bring the motherboard out of the machine now see this is the fan okay if you guys need a fan please look at the model number of this particular one uh, it is made by delta electronics and the model it's bsc 0805 ha 00 okay uh, we have to remove the fan in order to reach to the heatsink the fan has three screws okay we're gonna remove it we don't have to disconnect it completely in order to do uh, the thermal paste replacement so now the problem with this particular one it's actually the thermal pads because uh, this computer had recently uh, the fan it had it uh, replaced so the the thermal paste is still fresh as you see it right there it is fresh so oh, i'm just gonna get rid of it but um, in your case you'll have to replace and in my case as well the thermal paste will have to will look a little bit different and will have to be replaced as well so let's see. let's remove the thermal pads and clean clean the thermal paste from the CPU itself. Okay, so excuse me just one second. 
Okay, so we're gonna remove the thermal paste also from the heatsink itself. Okay, and now we're gonna reapply. So look at the CPU. Onto this die, in the middle die, it will have to be thermal paste. On the small dies, on the left and on the right, will have to be thermal pads okay now let's see what you could do you'll once you have the the thermal pads already purchased me i have a type of a thermal pad which is actually uh, has to be cut to order so i'm gonna do that right now okay uh so Do the same for the other one. Um, sorry, hello. Yes. Okay, we're gonna put the thermal pad onto the other smaller die. Okay. And just to make sure that it's the right thickness, we're gonna look. Well, on the camera, you won't really be able to see, but you can look if actually onto the sides, if the thermal pads are making contact with the, uh, with the heatsink, which in this case it does. There are no gaps to be seen, and that will just show you that it does since the thermal pad stayed onto the heatsink, okay? You can also apply it directly to the heatsink. The heatsink has two little uh, uh, grooves, or I don't know how to call it, that will show you where the thermal pads go. Don't worry if you cut the thermal pad a little bit bigger than, uh, than the die, that will not affect in any way how the computer will cool off. Now, for... For the main die, we're gonna apply two small drops of good quality thermal paste. Now, I've seen people which they use uh, thermal paste and thermal pads in a combination. That's the worst idea you can have because you don't want it to be too thick. Okay, so apply thermal paste only to the middle die. Okay, we're gonna put back the heat sink. Okay. Tighten up the screws. Okay, make sure they're tight properly. Do not over tie them as you don't want to strip the screws. Uh, <clears throat> we're gonna put back the fan. Okay, remember the silver screw goes onto the corner right there. And then you have two black screws. If you chose to disconnect the, the, the connection of the fan, make sure you put it back. And now we can uh, put back the motherboard into the case. Make sure you look at the right orientation. And one more word of advice onto the USB and the audio part of the logic board. You have this, this is your um, power button. Make sure it that you don't you don't put too much force onto that one. So I would start at an angle, start with this side first, start at a 45 degree angle, and then just sit it down. Move the cables out of the way, so the Wi Fi cable and um, the other cable, move it away. We're gonna put it just like this, okay? Make sure the connections are properly aligned onto this side, okay? That's very important, otherwise, it, it, the board won't go straight, okay? 
now we have it there and now we can push it down okay so you motherboard will go down and then it kind of clicks into place you have the usb properly aligned and you have all the other connections properly aligned here you're gonna put back the two screws which are holding the main board into place okay one there one here make sure the power button has a mechanical feedback put back the wi-fi cables okay we're gonna put back this connector okay and now you see you have these thermal uh, uh, thermal pads which are used for the secondary uh, hard drive if you decide to uh, put a secondary drive so we're gonna connect first the power the ssd power cable i'm sorry okay that's it's is right here on the right hand side right on top of the sata connector gotta move this cable out of the way push it make sure it's pushed all the way down we're gonna connect the sata connector it's gonna be a little bit tight but it's a long enough cable allow you to do that and now we're gonna put this down don't over tie these screws just in case you'll have to open it up again for some other reason down the road okay What's up with you? Okay. okay, the third, the fourth leg does not go in, so let's see what's preventing that leg to go in. Okay. What is it, buddy? What is it? Why won't you just go in? Oh, you won't go in because me, as an idiot, I put the screw in the wrong place. So that screw is actually gonna go, my bad, okay, will go right in here by the CPU, okay? Oh, but I'm sorry, by the RAM, right there. And there we go. Yeah, sometimes I make mistakes, especially when I'm doing the video without having, without any kind of, uh, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, post-processing the video, this is done in real time, so yeah, sometimes I make mistakes, we're all humans, okay, I can't wait to see the negative comment comments, oh, you are a joke. You have no idea what you're doing. You shouldn't do this kind of videos. Well, guess what, buddy? Uh, show me that person who does everything right the first time. And you know. now we have the Nook properly assembled. We're gonna plug in the power to it. You wanna make sure that it powers on. I'm not gonna connect any cables. I'm just gonna connect the power cable, and I'm looking at the power button which turned blue obviously the nook is starting up now i'm going to do some tests on it to to see how uh, how the thermal how it behaves and uh, yeah that's that's that this should fix your problem okay um it is one of the most common issues with this uh, with these uh, machines uh if there are any issues after that i will uh, report it and i will add um 
I will add uh, another video at the end of this video if uh, there are found any other problems and I'm going to show you how to fix it but this should definitely uh, do the job as uh, this was a thermal event which was triggering the computer to shut off in order to protect itself. So yeah, uh, I hope that this short uh, video helped uh, some of you guys um, in, uh, and uh, hope you guys learned something. If this video was useful, uh, please uh, please leave a comment, uh, subscribe to my channel, uh, where more videos are uh, um, updated, you know, as as often as I do have a chance. Okay, until next time, stay safe, take care, guys.